Good morning once again. Welcome to today's session on BC315 Life Skills. Before we could begin with our session, can I request one of us to lead us in prayer, please? Yes. Somebody raise the hand. Is there anyone who would like to pray today? Good morning, Abni. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. You can lead us in prayer. Mangi, it's been a long time. Would you like to pray? Okay, yes, Master. Thank you. It's been a long time hearing you, so it would be nice if you could pray. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. let's pray. Yeah, Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. For this morning, we pray, Father, that you you pour your Holy Spirit in us, Lord, so that you will open our heart, you will, you will empower Pastor Diana, Lord, so that whatever he preaches, Lord, whatever he teaches us this morning, Lord, will be your word, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you let it stick in the heart, let it be a skill that we will use, Lord, for your glory. And for your name, Lord. In your mighty name, Father, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. Okay, so today we're going to start on a new lesson, people management. Okay, so let me share the presentation. Okay. Okay, I'm sharing the PPT. Okay, as per our notes on people ma management, there are different aspects that covers. It covers on people are the key to our success and we see working with people, organizing, delegating, motivating. And then we also see that evaluating, letting go and the three strike policy. So actually people management is uh, a topic on itself or a course on itself that there's so much more to study and learn from it so i thought we can discuss on this um topic little in detail where we can split it into two or three weeks based on the course how much we are able to cover in each session okay so we're going to go on little detail is that okay with everyone Okay. <clears throat> okay. So here we see people management. I'm audible, right? To everyone. Let me check. Yeah, I'm audible. Just give me a minute, please. Yeah. <laughs> So people manage, uh, managing people or people management is to do with people. You, you take any aspect or any kind of ministry or business or workplace, everything is involved with people. So ministry is all to do about people. It's about how we serve along with them, how we work with them, how we understand them. So it involves people. So people are the best asset 
let it be in any sector it can be ministry workplace business but are not always given the attention that they deserve or need from managers so managing people or and leading teams can be challenging in certain sectors but it depends all on people how they are successfully managing and making the most of people in their ministry or business or workplace and how we can work together to achieve certain goals maybe a ministry or it can be a business or workplace all of us have a vision mission and certain goals that has been set through which that we drive ourselves drive our team to reach there so managing people and leading teams are not too easy so to get it right and to get the whole team work together and um, and make a great performance uh, even under pressure but if we get it wrong and it can add unnecessary stress to all to everyone's work so in today's session we are going to uh, 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 get into some pointers how we can best manage and lead our team how we can best manage and lead our team and we have some uh, some key tips as uh, how some theories are involved and we can look at how we can apply them to our ministry or business or workplace we can see that today so in ministry is all about people as we said ministry is to do with people so the notion of people management are not always uh, uh, the first thing in the mind of the person running a ministry or any kind of work or a business but no matter how good the setup is without the right people or the right person in the place the ministry of the business potential will never be realized so we see um, jane jenkins who is the head of human resource at prama she says good staff management can add a huge amount to a business but is not always top of the list for busy bosses so what is she trying to tell you she's saying people are the assets people are the assets so what is the asset in a ministry or a business anyone from the class people isn't it people are the assets yes pastor uh, because everything is done uh, through people and without people it would be impossible to do uh, to accomplish any uh, large task yes it is easy for machine nowadays but people still are essential right because the machine is just a machine it will perform the duty of what it has been uh, what input it has been given or uh, what has been uh, uh, programmed with but people are not like the machines they can think feel act emotionally they can uh, they can react or they have the ability to make decision at the right thing to do at the right time but whereas machines will just do as how it is programmed with thanks mangi for bringing that point but here we see jane jenkins says people are our best asset she says that we can have cash rich and have as many uh, she just gives illustrates a farm a business and here she is illustrating that we may have many cows as we like and have a top range of milking parlor but without the right people in place all of these things are irrelevant so 
what is it people are our most valuable asset let it be in any area it can be ministry business workplace or in any sector if you see people are our most valuable asset we need to value them so as leaders what is our main intention we need to learn to value our team members we need to learn to value our people how what happens in the work setup many employers know what they want from their staff or a team member in terms of attitude and skill but are unclear about how to get the best from their staff so that's where ms jenkins says a fundamental understanding of what motivates an individual staff member is crucial for their own progression and for the process so here we look at how some of the main themes can be applied at our ministry at our business or in any kind of work sector so what are those i've just shared the okay i've not shared the ppt i thought i've shared it just give me a minute please uh powerpoint presentation share hide okay so here are a uh, few of the characteristics that employers look for in staff okay everyone are able to see this okay so we're going to discuss on this now first is initiative second we can look into the commitment third we look into the respect for company tenacity or dependability reliability and we can also look into technically competent competent and seeing the big picture also be flexible so we see jane jenkins says your, your behavior as an influence on others whether you want it or not so the behavior of a leader a manager is more important why because it influence the team members so the attitude and approach of a boss sets an example for all those are around him why because a behavior as an influence on others whether we want it or not so the stumbling block yes when the boss or head of a team or it can be a ministry leader or it can be a business leader feels that they have been clear about what they expect from staff but the tasks are not performed or goals are remained missed so some staff understand what they need to achieve or motivate themselves to improve but it may not be the same with others not others not many would self motivate or push themselves further in terms of growth or to do what they have to do but as a boss knowing your team's motivation and what they want to achieve is very important so knowing what motivates the staff or the what motivates the team is not as easy that we would get it from them so how do we get how do we understand that's where a leader role is played a leader does not just lead a team but a leader tries to understand the team member personally the skills talents what each one carry may be different from each other so as a leader you look at a person professionally you will understand the skills the talents that a person carries but a good leader or a great leader at the same time he will go much beyond that that is by understanding the person personally so as a leader when you understand a person personally 
and you know what can be achieved or what uh, skill this person is carrying to bring the most out of that person, we need to understand the person personally and move along with him. The minute you have a, a, a you know a, a, a team member personally, you build a good relationship with that person. The minute a leader is able to connect with a team member and he's able to build him, so the minute he's able to relate to him, you see, you have the opportunity to motivate this person to build the person when you can understand him, what he's going through. The minute you have that kind of freedom, that kind of relationship with your team, their team members, you see that member can go much beyond what has been expected from them. So the best thing to do is understanding a person. You need to understand from where he or she is coming from. I'm not talking about the place, but the nature, the background, uh, why he or she is doing what he is doing. If they are doing good, good, but still you need to understand what is motivating this person to go beyond what is expected. If somebody is underperforming, still you need to know what is happening with this member that he is not, um, you know, keeping up the standard or keeping up to the level what is expected. The minute we understand, you can work with that person and help him or her to do better. So as a leader, as manager, we may have all the power and all the right whether to keep a team member and to remove that person. But then that should not be the goal of a people management. A leader should be a good people manager, should lead people with understanding. You should not be a person uh, with, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, um, hard hearted or, uh, you know, how to put it across. Um, should not be a people a person, a leader should not be a person who takes a decision instantly, uh, I mean, a uh, ha harsh decision on the staff or the team member, but then be a person of understanding. Understand the person and see how you can work with him. We will discuss on this in detail when we discuss on the very last point on the three strike, three strike policy. Okay, how we give chance for the pers person to rework, to motivate, and you know uh, perform better. Okay, we will talk about it little later. So many managers or uh, many managers think by giving staff um, the one of the way to motivate them you know many managers think that by giving them an extra money or extra cash they will get a long term boost in performance but while extra salary often provides a short term boost it is often not long before the staff member goes back to the potential underperformance or demotivating so they say that the challenge is to understand what others' incentive can be offered and what will make the biggest difference for the individual. So it might be a staff member, one more time off and reward for the additional efforts, especially if they are on a comfortable wage. So the key thing is to find out what they want. <clears throat> Because not all people are same. Each one's needs and the way they work are different. So as a leader, we need to understand the person. And you need to see what is needed to keep that person motivated. So we can only work with each person by knowing the individual from their point of view. The minute we understand a team member, then we know how to handle each and every member because they are different. 
just the way how we have our five fingers which are not in the same size or equal length all five fingers are very important in our hand and they are different size the same way people are different all the team members are very important but then they are different and we need to value their difference we need to respect the individual we need to respect the people as they are and see how we can work with them so that's where the people management skill comes into a leader but at the same time there's a risk <clears throat> what is that sometimes it may take a long time. There's a time it takes to understand people. But if you're given that, if you're looking a person to work with you on a long time, you need to give that time to understand people, to understand your team members. The minute you understand them, you build a good rapport with them. The minute you build a good rapport with them, despite how hard or how challenging the work could be you can make sure that the team will stand with you so one of the skill to motivate the team is a communication skill we need to be effective in communication which is a very vital for any leader in in any sector it can be ministry business in any sector it is very vital and we have covered on the communication skill before uh, there are different ways of communication uh, like verbal nonverbal, listening we have covered them all and these are good so when it comes to communication what we look at is time and again we need to give certain uh, feedbacks or a good feedback to the staff to the team to motivate them our feedback encourages our team. So how do you give a feedback? Sometimes we need to be specific to the task that they are working in. Not a general to everyone, but as each individual are different, as we are, as we are, uh, 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 you know, uh, trying to look or trying to build each individual. So our feedback also should be specific to that person. The minute we are specific to that person, you know, he's been touched, he's been uh, uh, encouraged. Why? Because uh, he feels valued. Individually, you're paying attention to this person. So that makes a difference. Second should be descriptive. It should be in detail. You need to tell why you're saying what. The third can be focuses on the behavior and the event. So you can focus what went well, how you could have done better. And also, when we're giving a feedback, how you could have done better, before you could say that, give a positive feedback, what are the things that this person did well? The minute you appreciate a person, and now he is receptive or open enough to take the correction of how he could have done better. And the next point we see is a timely feedback keeps the team and the individual motivated. Timely. So you're getting the person connected. It's not to do with, um, you know, appraisal in one year. So you get to sit with that person and give all the negative things. No, it should be very different. This is what the world does. You know, they list all the negative things or all the failures, what the person did throughout the year to just let him know how unfit this person is at the workplace. See, a boss can bring all this point on an individual and it can make him feel a failure and it will only make this person, uh, you know, uh, unproductive because he's not been motivated. And, you know, this may lead the person either to uh, underperform or quit. But then as a good manager, as a good leader, what we need to do is 
motivate the person positively and speak what is expected from that person. That way, we are building the person. We are also uh, showing that, that we value this person. We value you as an individual. You make a difference in the company, in the ministry. This is very important. A good leader will build people, not break them. None of us are perfect. Even as a leader, we may fail to do certain things. But as God has been so gracious in building us in our imperfectness, I think we need to show the same grace to our team members, to our staff. There are two things that can happen. One, we are motivating that person to grow strength through strength as a better person and be a, a you know, a, a, to a, to motivate him and to do, to perform better. And the second way, we are also raising good, you know, good leaders. Keeping in mind, great leaders always raise good leaders. So if you are a great leader, then we need to be mindful to raise good leaders. A good leader will not uh, bring up the negativity around the people because his attitude matters. So he'll see to it how he can encourage and motivate his team. And he will do it timely, timely manner so that it encourages the team. And next point we see is not necessarily formal. It need not be a formal meeting. No, you can also motivate your team member just by taking him or her to a coffee a personal connect to build a rapport. Avoid shocks or surprises. We should avoid shocks or surprises. Keep the team, uh, 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 keep the team updated what has been expected from them way before in time so that they get themselves aligned. They set their mind aligned to the vision, <clears throat> to the goal that has been expected so that they can build and do better in their work, in the ministry. And this can also give an intention of allowing the person to change, to develop or grow professionally. So. Every person needs certain time to perform better. So that's where the leadership comes. The leader allows the person because all of us work in different space. So we need to give that time. Understanding that individual, we need to uh, give certain time for that person to change or to develop into a new skill and to grow professionally. <clears throat> Sorry. So a good thing for a leader to remember is the AID approach. What is AID, AID approach? A stands for action, I stands for impact, and D stands for do. Action, impact, do. So action, when you look at your team, or a team member, you need to check what did you observe? What did you observe by their action? An impact. What was the effect of that action? We need to check. Was it positive, negative? Positive, appreciate them. Negative, call them personally and correct them. When it is positive, you need to appreciate that person, friend of everyone. Because that will only encourage and motivate the whole team. But if it is negative, it is always good to call that person individually and ask them what was the reason for it so that we may understand the background of the very act. And then bring a correction in love. And then the third point is do. What should be done? differently. So you're giving a feedback in a positive manner and allowing the person understand what could have been done differently, which would help all of us, the team and the company.
or the ministry. So in this way, the person, even if he has not thought, he will understand. Or he can also uh, uh, share his point of view why things happen that way, so that we will understand. OK, so it's always good to discuss out, to discuss with the team member personally when it is negative. Give me a minute, please. <clears throat> so the next one we are looking at is principles of leadership and here it is adders three circle diagram so john adder is an academic and a leadership theorist he has developed an action centered leadership model which is represented here as adders three circle diagram which illustrating uh, you know the core management responsibility so we see that achieving the task managing the individual managing the team or a group so all goes hand in hand but as we saw, Mrs. Jenkins said that, you know, bosses often focus on one or two of these elements. So the struggle to achieve the ultimate aim of dealing with all three is there. So while a boss might be good telling their team what they want or focusing on the individual management issues, they often ignore the wider cohesiveness of the team. So bringing all the three together and achieving a round approach is the ultimate aim, she says. Keeping this in mind, keeping all these three circle in mind, like achieving the task, managing the individual. So when we, when we, when we be successful in managing the individual, Gradually, we will be managing the team or the group well. So these three things are very important. What is it? Achieving the task. We cannot achieve the task if you don't manage the individual. So first thing, I guess, as a leader, we need to focus to manage the individual. So if you, if you, ha if you have a team of 10 to 20 people, if you're able to pay attention to each individual and understand them, so that way you're managing the team or a group well. The minute you manage the team, the group well, you see gradually you're achieving the task. Because it is a win-win situation. So how do you do that? It all starts being a good leader. So as a good leader, what are the certain things that we need to keep in our mind? So I would like to share a few points on that. Seven points. What are they? Creating a climate for success. For us to be successful, we need to have an atmosphere in a very positive way. People should not feel, the team should not feel that they're dragging themselves to come to ministry, come to serve along with you, come to work along with you. So they should be motivated. They need to have this passion to come to ministry, to workplace willingly, with passion. So the minute they have this passion, you see them perform better. So now, as a leader, how do you create that passion with them? For that, a leader need to understand the person vision or if he has certain purpose. So the minute you understand the person's desire or his interest, and you're trying to create that opportunity in the place where the person is serving or working, you see the person is coming to the workplace with passion. And you see is more creative. And he does things out of his own will and interest. Why? Because 
he is doing what he is interested in. How? Because you created that space for him. In that way, we will create a climate or the atmosphere for success. The second point we look is challenging the status quo. There are challenges, but as a leader, how are you going to handle it? Very important. And the third is offering a vision. Now, each individual are different. And each of us have our own vision, own purpose, own interest. As you're encouraging them, as you're creating a space to fulfill their interest and their vision and mission, when you offer a greater vision for the company, for the ministry, you see each one of them picking that vision for themselves and serving along with you. So for that, we need to understand the person. Very important. Now, the fourth point is doing the right thing. This is what managers do, doing the right thing. So when we understand each individual, OK, there's no partiality, but you understand that person. So in this situation, what is the right thing to do for that individual? And you make sure that you respect and you do it for him. The minute you do the right thing at the right time for the individual, you are winning that person for life. Where he will stand with you at the time when the challenge sits. Every ministry, every work, every business will definitely have certain challenges. It won't be smooth throughout the year. There are different seasons even in a year. So even in our ministry, in our work, in our business, we may have to face different seasons. And that's when you see your team doing the right thing by standing by your side. If you stand with the individual at their face, at their difficult time, and you see they stand with you as a team when you are into a difficult time. It's not the individual, the ministry or the business is in difficult time. The next point is getting buy-in. Again, your rapport matters with each individual. They will buy into your vision. They'll buy into uh, the uh, uh, that motivates you, that drives you, and the new purpose, new thing that you're trying to share with them. They will accept it. The next is making the complex single. Whatever is hard, when you break it down, it becomes easy for us to handle and work towards it. The last is, do you cast a long shadow as a leader? And what is your shadow? Very important. Look into it. And as you grow, as you work, a leader must also look at other leaders. A ministry leader should also look at other ministry leaders where you can grow encourage, motivate yourself, and be the best leader. For a businessman, look at the other business leaders, how they work and grow. So the leadership is, uh, uh, is like the armed forces, can mean the difference between the life and death. It means having the right character to get people on our side and ensuring that they will be prepared to put their lives at risk for their leaders. That is nothing but it's not like life and death. What I mean to say here is when we motivate and have build a strong team, the team will be willing to take that extra mile. The team will be prepared, you know, to take that extra mile, even sometimes even before you could ask or request. 
because that is understandable you have approached them you have served with them you have uh, you have understood them you see the team is now understanding you and they would be willingly want to walk that extra mile with you so as a result the forces are now looking for the people with effective intelligence so we need to look at the effective intelligence where we might have a Just going to So here we see the leadership. The leadership means to motivate people. A good leader means one who is able to convey the vision, motivate the people, and drive the people to accept that vision and work towards it. So here we see leadership means projecting a personality and a character to motivate the subordinates to do what is required by promoting a positive sense of purpose and direction. How? by inspiring, influencing, instilling self-esteem in others and creating a momentum and success. I just post this. This is very important for a leader. Yeah. So what are the capabilities for a good leader? where we, uh, assessing the leadership capabilities is very subjective. How? There is no clear yardstick, but, but the key is to have credibility with people you work with. Without this, we will not progress. So the dictionary definition of credibility is being trusted or believed in. This can often be judged by people before they meet someone on the basis of what they had heard or found out. So what we understand here, running, in, running an effective team means looking at the task in a functional way to ensure they are completed. So the military, uh, for example, the military teaches people to look at the needs of a team the task and the individuals involved in. So all of these can overlap. If, for instance, one member of the team is injured, the team would collapse or might not cope. So everything in the life means looking at all three areas. So what is it? So how do we build credibility? How do we build credibility? So Colonel M. Combat shares few tips on building our credibility. How? We need to have a vision. The leader should have a vision. And he need to tell people the vision and where he wants to go to. Now, why is it important for a leader to convey his vision to people? Why? Because for him to manage people, for him to have this good people management skill, he needs to be transparent. He needs to convey to people what is expected out of them. So that is where the effective communication comes in place. You know, uh, many other aspects come into place. So he needs to be a visionary first for him to convey a vision. Now, he's, he has a vision. Now, you, as a good leader, he needs to convey this vision in a positive manner that people may accept it 
and help you to achieve that vision. So how? So he needs to tell the people about the vision and where he wants to go along with the team, team to achieve that. Now second, a leader should convey, walk the walk and be involved. That means whatever he is saying, he needs to walk. He should be a man of integrity. Third, we see, instill a sense of purpose, very, very important. For every action, there should be a purpose. For every task, there should be a purpose. There should be an impact. So we, as a good leader, we need to be, uh, you know, we need to install the sense of purpose into people so that they may be encouraged, motivated and be part of this vision. is very important so that we aim together to reach that. Now, the last point is use stepping stones. Now, we need to break into different set of goals to reach that purpose. So break the big vision into small stepping stones so we as a team can encourage, can be motivated to cross each and every milestone. So as we are breaking them into small stepping stones, we need to be mindful of others in the team because we would have people with different level. Keeping all of them in mind, we need to set the goals in the way as a team we can achieve. And we need to set goals that are achievable, realistic, not unrealistic realistic the minute you set goals realistic goals it will motivate people to because it is achievable it will motivate people to uh, cross each goal easily they will not be stressed out they will enjoy doing what they are doing so we need to be mindful of people in setting uh, uh, the goals and uh, and assigning to the team so I think with that, we will stop and we will look into uh, other aspects in the next class where how we can lead our team, how we can motivate our team, how we can delegate things to our team and how we can build them, how we can understand and build them, motivate them and evaluating when we eval uh, when we evaluate and evaluate the performance we need to give it lovingly that would motivate them and build them not break them our feedback should be only for their good and then later we will look into the other aspects and we'll see how we can um, be benefited from this people management session and how we can study in detail and grow to be a good leader good people managers um, in whichever area that we each of us are in it can be ministry business workplace no matter where we are we need to display the christ likeness in our attitude in our character because this is what God is asking us to do, because Jesus himself set a good example as a leader. He never came to boss around, but then he came as a servant leader. Yes, this is not a servant leadership class. This is all to do about people management. But again, in, even in people management, there is a leader that is involved. And we are talking about that leader who is a good leader, who can manage people with a heart of understanding. Isn't that needed? Yes, despite the sector, despite the area that we serve, each, I mean, each of us serve in, um, we need to work with people with a heart and mind keeping the grace that God has shown upon us, how we can gracefully, uh, lovingly motivate, encourage, and build people in the area wherever we are in. Because this is how God motivates and builds us, isn't it? So we need to show the same grace to the people. And then later we will move on to the other topics. Okay, with that we will end this session with a word of prayer. Okay, 
Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, that you are a God who calls us, who motivates us, and you lead us. Lord, we pray for a greater measure of your grace, your wisdom, and your understanding to be imparted to each of us in this class, and also those who would be attending later, so that each of us will know how to manage people the way you managed them, Lord. Even in the team, the disciples team whom you had, Lord, not all of them were in the same level. But then, Lord, you were gracious to each one of them. You paid attention to each individual. You worked and served along with them with much grace, with much love. Lord, we pray and ask for that wisdom into each one of us, Lord, that we may walk in love. Walk with that wisdom, Lord. As your word says, Lord, that Jesus increased in wisdom. Lord, we pray and ask that as we serve in your kingdom and serve in different areas, Lord, as a child of God, we ask and we pray and we thank you that we increase the wisdom of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. I hope it was a blessing to each one. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.